So I built this thing and it has a distance sensor and that's ultrasonic. It has a servo and it has two vacuum tubes at the top. It takes three power supplies to power it and once you turn it on, what it does is that the servo here shows the distance that the ultrasonic sensor measures. And the main point of this project is that instead of using transistors to generate the signals that work inside this thing, um, I'm only using vacuum tubes. So there are no transistors in here except the ones inside the servo and the ultrasonic sensor. Everything else in the circuit is just resistors, capacitors, and these two vacuum tubes. And I've designed this so that you can take off the top and see the inside of the whole box. And there's just a mess of wiring inside. Um, and these two vacuum tubes connect down to a circuit board where the circuit exists. And I have a drawing of the final circuit. If you, it's kind of two drawings on one piece of paper. If you block off the bottom, this is the overview of the inside of the circuit. The idea is that here's the ultrasonic sensor, here's the servo, and this circuit here generates a square wave that triggers the ultrasonic sensor because the way that the sensor works is you need a square wave signal that's something like 50 or 100 hertz and that triggers the burst of ultrasonic sound. And then the ultrasonic sensor outputs a PWM signal, which turns out um, from the experiments and calculations I did can be fed directly into the servo. And the PWM signal outputted here works perfectly with the PWM signal that the servo needs as input. So just directly connecting it um, works. And um, I have a whole pile of paper that shows the work I did during this whole project. The first thing I did was experimenting with the servo and the motor, uh, the servo and the ultrasonic sensor. And with different DC cycles and different frequencies, I showed that it's between 8.5 and 42 centimeters. And at the end, I made this dial on the box um, experimentally. I didn't calculate it. And you can see that that's actually quite accurate. It's from 85 millimeters to about 450 millimeters. And this is, this is using the speed of sound and the frequency of the PWM signal. So um, most of my work throughout the last few weeks was focusing on this part of the circuit. The big problem is how do you generate a square wave using only vacuum tubes? And that, uh, that took me a long time to figure out. I, I saw this YouTube series on making digital logic out of vacuum tubes, and that was very useful for me. And one big idea is that low and high is no longer five and zero volts. Low voltage is now six volts, and high voltage is 24 volts. That's also why I have 24 volts and 6 volts as two of the power supplies. Um, and another thing is, you need negative voltage at part. So this says 12 volts, but it's actually supplying minus 12 volts to the, um, to the project. And the idea is that to make these two inverters, um, there's a way to use transistors to make an inverter. You can use a single inverter. You can use a single MOSFET to make an inverter. But I've replaced that MOSFET here with a vacuum tube. And the vacuum tubes work quite similar, but it's the current through the, the current through the vacuum tube is decided by the voltage on the grid. And it's not a very simple relationship at all, which is why you need so many resistors and different voltages around to correct everything. Um, so after I looked at the, after I looked at the connection between the servo and the, and the ultrasonic sensor, I then drew up a rough diagram of what I wanted the final thing to look like. And I originally had the idea of making a power supply, kind of combining all three of these out of vacuum tubes as well. But I didn't have time to do that. Um, I then, this, this specific circuit with two inverters and a resistor and a capacitor to generate a square wave wasn't the first thing that came to mind. I knew that there was this thing that existed. It's, a, it's called an A-stable multivibrator. And it was a circuit that I found online, which was supposed to be able to generate a square wave using, in this case, uh, two BJT transistors, not two MOSFETs, and a whole series of resistors and capacitors. Um, this was supposed to work, 
and I spent some time trying to figure out how exactly it worked. I also saw this um, very useful YouTube video. It's like an hour long um, because most most people's explanations aren't complete and that video actually shows the full complete solution um, explanation. But then there's a difference between BJTs and MOSFETs because with BJT transistors, it's the current that controls the current. The current on the base controlling the current through the transistor. But with MOSFETs, it's the voltage that controls the current. So the circuits are slightly different. Um, and I eventually built this circuit on a breadboard and it worked. And so I thought, okay, it works with a MOSFET. All I have to do now is change the MOSFET to a vacuum tube and the circuit should work. So I started experimenting with vacuum tubes. I looked at resistor networks on the grid of the vacuum tube and trying out all sorts of different values of resistors and measuring how much voltage is on the input and output. Um, the idea is to make a, the idea is to make a vacuum tube that can behave as an inverter. And once you have a vacuum tube that can behave as an inverter, you can just put it in here in place of the MOSFETs. I did, so I tried exactly that, but it didn't work. Um, and, and after a while, with all sorts of experimentation, I, I don't know if it's impossible or not, but I decided to try this other thing I saw because this seems more kind of discreet and simple. The idea is that you have two inverters and since they are inverters, for example, if the voltage were high, low, high, then it would be high here, low here, and the voltage would be charging this capacitor. And eventually this would get to a high voltage as well. So it would become, um, or rather this would become a low voltage. So this would be low, high, low. And the idea is that cycle repeats and the output here flips between high and low as decided by the resistance and the capacitance. So I, uh, tried to build this circuit first with MOSFETs, and that worked first try. Um, and then I, I started messing around with this specific vacuum tube that uh, it has pentode. It actually has, it's called a pentode. It actually has three grids on the inside. Um, two of them are just to kind of make the properties better. Only one of them actually controls the flow through the vacuum tube. And I did tests with the voltages of this. Um, I again tried building the MOSFET circuit and it did work, uh, ignore this. <laughs> um, and then I, I put it in here and it didn't work because after a lot of thinking I realized my mistake was assuming that the, these inverters built out of uh, vacuum tubes are perfect inverters because they're not. Um, on the input there's some, a perfect inverter would have infinite resistance on the input and zero resistance on the output. But I wasn't thinking enough about that. And the way I, with the way I initially designed it, there was 100 kilo ohms of resistance on the input and 10 kilo ohms of resistance on the output. And that wasn't a big enough difference, especially when I have a one mega ohm resistor in the circuit. So then once I realized that, I focused on trying to um, minimize I focused on trying to maximize input resistance while minimizing output resistance. And eventually the perfect balance that I stumbled upon is about one mega ohm on the input and 15 kilo ohms on the output. And that means you can chain the inverters together and they would still work with each other and the voltages all work out. So now one more problem is that if you just look at the output here, this is an output that's flipping between 24 and six volts, but the ultrasonic sensor takes a signal that's between zero and five volts as input. So I had to experiment around with a resistor divider um, to make sure that it would convert the voltages. And I did some theoretical calculations, but they weren't that accurate. I don't really know why. Um, they just didn't work in real life. Uh, this was a audio experiment. And I eventually, through experimentation, found out that this exact resistor network was the perfect one that converts. So then, I finally, um, so then I finally built this circuit and it worked and I added this switch that would turn off the power to the, I added this switch that would turn off the power to the servo and the ultrasonic sensor while still keeping the power to the vacuum tubes on.
and that's because these vacuum tubes, they take something like 20 seconds to warm up. They require heat on the inside for the electrons to flow through the vacuum. And so I can turn this off and then just turn it back on. And as I move, the server moves. The last thing I did was just creating a dial on the surface here out of paper. And I did that by kind of measuring two distances and dividing the angle and then copying it down onto this piece of paper.